Uh, okay, let's start. Uh, my name is uh, Shang Hai Tao. Uh, I'm currently uh, an engineer manager, which is uh, managing the ZenGT project in Intel. Uh, this is for the in this in ZenGT project is the software-based Intel graphics virtualization solution, which sounds uh, quite similar to the talk you last here. And uh, we are also trying to set up a demo uh, with the here. But uh, the issue is, uh, for some time, I don't know why it cannot recognize the VGA connector. So uh, I think one of the, my colleagues, David, here, he has a demo here. So if you, can, you want to have a, a single demo, just uh, go there and stay. It's OK. So let's start. So for the, uh, for the agendas, uh, First, I will give you some background. I think uh, just really to show you the what we need the graphics virtualization in a virtual machine, and we will quickly uh, go through all the existing arts. Uh, not all, uh, just uh, someone I know uh, the existing arts and try to compare them a bit, and then we will propose our ZenGT architecture. Uh, followed, uh, we will try to show you uh, some of the performance data and uh, give you the summary. Okay, first starting from the background. So actually, essentially, uh, you know, the graphics computing is quite important. You, it can be used in the entertainment, like the games you play in videos. And you can also, for the uh, UI acceleration for the Windows Aero or Compass, or you can also do the high performance computing. So I think the key point is it, when you move the, uh, all the physical things to the virtual machine, we still want this kind of same ex experience in the virtual machine. That's basically we need, why we need graphics in the virtual machine. So what can we use this virtual machine for? Basically, in the client, you can really launch multiple virtual machines, but which has the really rich uh, user uh, experience compared with the native. On the server side, we can enable you to share the GPU source on the server side to do the transcoding, to the, do the GPU computing, and do the VDI. Although on the embedded area, I don't have, I don't have offer any usage model, but basically if you have some usage model, our ZenGT can provide you the capability to share the GPU among the virtual machines. Okay, for the existing car. First one is the device emulation. So currently, you, I, I think you already know this. This is the Cumu Windows, uh, which show you the, basically the VM display. Uh, although we can do some automation to provide the display uh, a little bit better, but uh, we cannot do the 3D part. We cannot uh, emulate a modern GPU due to the really complexity and the bad performance in vision. The next we come to the spirit driver model. Basically, you, uh, this is the front end and the back end. They talk to each other to provide, uh, this is uh, just the framework. In the, uh, in the graphics side, basically you are trying to, you can forward the API, like the OpenGL, the DirectX, from the guest to the host for processing. Uh, it really achieved uh, pretty good performance, and we have multiple existing solutions available. Uh, it's hardware agnostic, but it is also quite complex. For example, you need to support so many the API versions. And uh, what's more, for example, if the guest is using a DirectX while the host is using OpenGL, it's still a hard problem. So next one is the device pass-through. From the performance point of view, this is really good because it really achieved the, almost a native performance, but the question is there's no multiplexing at all. You can only support one VM. Okay, let's, uh, go through, uh, let's talk about our ZenGT architecture. Here I, I want to mention, uh, I want to emphasize, in this ZenGT, we are trying to propose a mediated pass-through uh, by seeing this mediated pass-through, as you can see from the bottom, there is a device, uh, I think the IO emulation spectrum. Uh, on the left side, you got the uh, device, uh, you, you got the device emulator, 
which has the most multiplexing capability but has the worst performance. While in the right side, you got the actually the right pass through. So our solution is somehow in between. So uh, actually, we are trying to pass through the performance created resource, while for others, we provide the mediation. By doing this, we are able to uh, achieve a quite a good performance compared with native, and uh, we also provide, mid, uh, I think, uh, moderate the multiplexing. Next slide is uh, a mid, uh, little more details about uh, actually the some for software component involved in the, the in the Zenity architecture. As you can see, we can run the native graphics drivers in the virtual machine. Some uh, they can access some of the hardware directly, and for some portion of the hardware, you can you can see it is trapped by Zen and forward to the VGT manager for the mediation. So basically, this uh, VGT uh, manager is a kernel driver which resides in domain zero. Uh, and here I want to uh, emphasize, uh, from the VGT uh, concept, uh, the domain zero is just another guest. So you can see the uh, domain zero, the gen graphics driver, I think we all know it's i915 driver, is also only access part of the graphics resource. And for the previous resource, is we still need to trap and forward to VGT for processing. Uh, and we did something in Zen to call, uh, I think, self deep <laughs> uh, So to provide, uh, to trap this i915 and forward to VGT, which also in domain zero. So any question for this picture? I guess it's okay. Uh, next is uh, I want to talk about the uh, Intel graphics, uh, Intel the processor graphics. Uh, it's not the traditional diagram you see with all the 3D pipelines and the media decode pipelines. Uh, we are just, this is the only a simplified diagram from the resource <coughs> point of view. So why we show this, program, show this uh, diagram is uh, actually we, uh, as I said, we try to divide this performance critical resource and others. So first, I give you the overview of the resource. The next page, I will show you how we decide which is passed through and which we need to provide the mediation. Uh, this is GPU is uh, for the Intel. Uh, actually, I don't know <laughs> other vendors. For the Intel, uh, the first is the graphics memory. Uh, in Intel card, we have a single global virtual memory space, and we have multiple per process water memory space. You can see in the picture. And, uh, uh, and for the Intel card, we don't have the onboard video memory. So uh, actually, all this uh, water memory space is backed by the system memory, So which means we will have a sort of page tables to do the translation. For the global, we have the global GTT. And uh, for the per process uh, water memory space, we have the PPGTT. Mm. Next is uh, we divide the engine to be uh, render engine and a display engine. Both they uh, they have their internal context, and uh, for all the others, uh, which is not covered specifically in the picture, we just uh, call them global global state. Uh, next one is uh, uh, we did uh, provide some data. So we did some profiling on the access frequency uh, through the GPU interface. This is mainly we want to decide uh, for which part of the resource we will pass through and which we will do the mediation. As you can see, we are trying to run the two workload. Uh, the most frequent access is to the access to the command buffer. The command buffer itself is residing in the graphics memory. So uh, from our point of view, our decision is we uh, do the pass through for the graphics virtual memory space and uh, also from the, from the command buffer. I think I will cover the uh, command buffer a little more detail in the next slide. Uh, for the mediation, we do for the others. Okay, 
First one is about the global virtual memory space. Uh, essentially, uh, we are partitioning this space among the virtual machines, and we use the balloon to achieve this balloon uh, to achieve this partition. Uh, I think there is some difference compared with the general ballooning logic in the Dome Zero. Uh, I think in the general ballooning logic, essentially you are trying to ask, hey, uh, try to give me uh, four megabytes of memory. Uh, I will, you, you have too much memory, give me. And uh, for this uh, graphics virtual memory space, uh, we are see the same, but give me the four megabit of memory starting from this address. <coughs> So that's uh, the difference uh, with our ballooning. So actually, uh, by this, uh, in each VM can only access their portion of the resource. Uh, the next one uh, I need to mention is about the paid table. Uh, we partition the world, uh, global virtual memory space, uh, but the memory itself is backed by the system memory, so which uh, we have the translation in the GTT. We cannot, we cannot uh, uh, let guests to directly access this. So we are, we are also, uh, the GTT access will be mediated. For the portion of GTT that the guest has the uh, access right, uh, I mean, uh, the corresponding, uh, virtual, if the corresponding uh, virtual memory space is, uh, is the, uh, the guest is the owner for this, uh, this corresponding uh, memory space, this GTT, uh, we will validate and do the translation and the populate the global GTT. For other parts, we just put it is virtualized. This is we can ensure the uh, the isolation. Next one is about the poor process uh, virtual memory. Uh, I think the concept is quite similar compared with the CPU page tables. You have this uh, PPDRR name, which is uh, quite similar to the CR3. Then we have uh, two level of page tables to do the translation. And actually, uh, how we provide the virtualization for this, uh, we are also doing things uh, using the shadow, shadow page table te uh, technique. I think uh, that's all for this. Okay, uh, let's come to the command buffers. This is actually uh, a interface that the CPU will try to submit the workload for the GPU for processing and the GPU to provide feedback whether uh, which command I have already been processed. So the GPU, uh, the CPU will uh, submit uh, the workload uh, by first by writing the command buffer to actually write the command, you need to do this, 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 and uh, then update uh, the head register. Then the GPU uh, will do, uh, start the processing. Uh, whenever the GPU has passed the, this command and submitted to the core engine for execution, it will also update the tail register to, be, to point to the next command. So uh, in our handling of this command buffer, uh, we allow the guest to write to the command buffer directly. So essentially, this uh, command buffer is in the guest virtual memory space. We allow to, uh, the guest to have direct access, uh, but we uh, cannot allow the guest to uh, update the tail register directly. So uh, we, if the current guest uh, is the render owner, which means he has the ownership of this, uh, the, uh, the render engine. Uh, we will track this right and update the hardware accordingly. While if the guest is not the current owner, we will just queue this command without updating the hardware. Then uh, this uh, queued workload will uh, run when, we ne when next time we do a context switch and pick this VM as the next, next target. Then we reach to the uh, render engine sharing. So uh, I think I already said a little bit uh, just now, for the render engine, it, it's shared just like the CPU. 
so at a given time, only one VM can be the render owner. That means he can submit the workload, uh, really sublimit workload to the hardware. Uh, and uh, um, we uh, did a, a simple round robin scheduler. I think the time uh, epoch is uh, 60 millisecond. Uh, as I also list uh, the basic render context switch flow here. Uh, first, we need to win, wait for the VM1 to finish their work. Then we will save the MMO registers for the VM1, and we flush the internal TLV caches and issue a hardware context switch command. Then we will restore the MMO registers uh, to v from the VM2 setting, and uh, we submit the queued uh, workload. Let's go through the display engine part. Uh, in the display engine part, uh, currently we are providing two uh, models. First is called the direct display engine mode. Uh, uh, this is essentially when you're trying to do a VM switch, uh, we will, the VGT driver will update the, um, I think we'll update the surface point to, be, to point to the uh, guest surface directly. This is why we call this a, the direct display model. Another one is uh, the indi indirect display model. Uh, basically, it's, uh, the VGT driver will provide uh, an API to expose, the, for example, the location of the guest frame buffer and uh, its format and other related uh, information. So actually, this is, this is the computer in the domain zero who need to computate this frame buffer to its display. It's, uh, so VGT does not own the display to the hardware. We just provide the location, format, anything you need so that you can do the compositing. I, I believe uh, John and Ben, their, uh, the their coffee approach can also use the, uh, can also uh, use the combined with the API we provided by this indirect display model. Uh, so far, any question? Okay. Uh, next, I will show you the performance. Uh, I think first, uh, this performance is not the final performance. We just want to show you so that you can have an idea uh, what the performance will look like. Uh, the, this picture will show that we are trying to run one virtual machine, and we run uh, these four workload. We compare with the native and with the direct pass-through solution. As you can see, I, the NGT can uh, achieve pretty good performance compared with the VTD and the native. Next is, uh, I try to show you how is the performance of the two VMs. So uh, we are try, for example, uh, we are trying to use the single VM uh, as a reference. So it's normalized as the 100. And then we sum the performance from the two VM together. You can see the sum is nearly equal to 100. So basically it's the the uh, performance sum of the two VM is equal to if you only run VM since then. Uh, I think that's all for the summaries. Uh, first, uh, we need to provide the graphics virtualization so that we can sustain a consistent and rich user experience in the virtual machine. And uh, for our ZNGT architecture, we are able to achieve good performance because uh, we essentially pass through the performance critical resource. And uh, we can support moderate multiplexing by do the mediation. And uh, I think the current status that we are able to support up to four virtual machines sharing the single uh, GPU in uh, on Intel, uh, I think the fourth generation, right? <laughs> I think the fourth generation has well CPU. Uh, we have already published our code 
uh, and hosted in the GitHub, uh, we'll, uh, we will also constantly update to reflect our progress, the recent uh, development bug fixing. So uh, what I really want people <laughs> to do is, if you have interest, please try and provide our feedback. Maybe the bugs, uh, maybe your usage models, uh, maybe your specific requirement, so that we can, uh, we can consider and we can inter integrate in the next release. And uh, although currently uh, we did not uh, push all the patches to the upstream, uh, it will be our target for next year to provide, uh, to push these patches to, uh, to the upstream. But uh, we, we, we already published the code here. Uh, that's all. And if you have, uh, if you have question, please ask. If you want to see the demo, please go to David. Uh huh. Which cards are supported? Oh, which card? Uh, so basically, for the yeah, I think the fourth generation, uh, which uh, the code name is Haswell. I mean the CPU integrated graphics. If you boss the, the fourth generation uh, i7 processor, i5 or i3, as long as it has the Intel integrated graphics, uh, we support this. And we also support the E3 server processor because uh, that server processor also has the Intel integrated graphics. Uh -huh. Not all of the E3s. Oh, sorry, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so the key point is you, you need to have the Haswell generation of Intel graphics processor. So what is the roadmap to support 1000 VM? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, the, I think that's a hard question. <laughs> Because uh, currently we are limited by the, because we are doing the partition among the graphics memory, as you can see, uh, we are limited by the total graphics memory and the, the aperture size. So for example, if we, you run a single Windows VM, you need 128 megabytes of aperture. So we, in the hardware, we only have, I think, 512. So <laughs> we, 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 we cannot support more. So we're talking about two years time frame then? Uh, I think I'm a software, software guy. I'm not a hardware group. So it's hard for me. But I will prove. I think I will uh, give feedback to the hardware team to say people want to run 1,000 virtual machines using Intel. In, in three months. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah, kind of curious about those GitHub repos as well, a couple of things. Um, one, why you just put a patch in the repo rather than actually putting the code in the repo. Um, was uh, a slightly odd, odd way of using a GitHub repo, I, I thought. Uh, I think that <laughs> it, is, uh, it is because uh, we don't have uh, enough space in the GitHub account. So I can only host the patch. <laughs> if I host the... <laughs> It's uh, I host the whole Zen tree, Qmu tree, kernel tree. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then the, the other one was uh, sort of looking at your Zen patch. Uh, it is pretty large, um, uh, and it seems very dedicated to, to this purpose as opposed to kind of going for the, the more general purpose secondary emulator approach. I was wondering why you needed to bury so much code directly in Zen. Uh, sorry, I, I don't quite understand the last question. I mean, you, your, your Zen patch is probably least was well, certainly over a thousand lines as far as I can tell mm -hmm. uh, and you seem to have a dedicated uh, IO emulator buried directly in Zen hypervisor um, for, for you mean PT. dedicate uh, dedicated what I don't you have a de dedicated uh, emulation model you, you trap MMIO reads and writes directly in Zen um, and I was wondering why you needed to do that I think we need to provide the uh, emulation, right? So anyway, we need to trap the guest uh, access yeah, to the resource, why, right? Why you didn't do that in GMU? I mean, GMU would get all the MMIOs anyway. 
Ah, uh, that's a good question. I so David, you know the answer. I, so I think that the choice was made early on to provide a, a faster path to the place where the, the mediator actually runs as a driver and jobs are Okay. So I just to repeat for the mic. Um, Early on, the decision was just made to provide a fast path to the to the driver, where the real guts of everything is. And if you look at the the kernel patch; it's even bigger. Um, and we just were looking for the shortest way through. So you said that the command buffer is uh, directly shared with the guest, so the guest is free to write the command buffer whatever he likes. Uh, and um, so is it possible, considering that there is some shared state, uh, at least uh, the GGTT uh, mm -hmm. is, is shared across all the VMs, is it possible to use a common buffer from a malicious guest uh, to read or write the memory um, that actually is shared across uh, the VMs? Actually, uh, first, uh, in theory, uh, we you can only access the their own your own portion of the graphics memory. The command buffer is uh, the command buffer is uh, in your own share of graphics memory, right? So you cannot access other graphics memory. We provided isolation. The next question is how about uh, there is, uh, for example, pointers in 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 your share of graphics memory, which essentially point to other place. That is another VM, uh, another VM's uh, graphics memory. Uh, I, we did this uh, actually. Uh, we, when uh, as I said, all the when you uh, finally try to submit the workload via uh, write to the tail register, uh, at that point we will scan all the command. We will find if you are trying to access the resource that not belongs to you. You have to do validation of each command. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Did I miss anybody earlier? No? Is everything open source, even the demo? Uh, In the slide, you show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the demo is so built on the build with this patch. Yeah. Everything, everything is there, way nothing internal. So just to repeat the, yeah. it's all open source. Uh, Other questions? Uh, so uh, what about support for OpenGL ES uh, in a scenario like this? I think this is the driver, right? Because we support the native driver. If they can support, we can support. More questions? No? Um, thank you. We're a little bit. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you, everyone.